Hi, this is Mrs. Gooding. Welcome to I Flip for Math, MathCast, Lesson 2-6, Adding Decimal Numbers. Um, it's really important that we read our quote this time because it has to do with our challenge problem. It's not that I'm so smart, it's just that I stay with problems longer. That was Albert Einstein, so we'll remember that later when we come back to our challenge problem. Our learning goal today is to add decimal numbers and check your work all the time. Check your work. Here are our individual lesson learning goals. We're going to use the decimal to line numbers up vertically before adding or subtracting. We're going to regroup when needed. That's We're talking about carrying here. The decimal in your answer should line up vertically with the decimals in the numbers that you added together, always. And use the opposite operation to check your addition and subtraction. Here is our vocabulary for today. We're going to use the word add end to mean a number or quantity to be added to another. So if we're adding six plus seven, the, both six and seven are our add-ins. Um, our sum would of course be the answer to six plus seven, which is 13, the answer to an addition problem. So write those down in your journal, pause it, and just replay it when you're ready to go. Here are our strategies again for adding decimals. You don't need to write all of these down, but if there are some that really might help you, you can write those down. Line up your decimals vertically before adding. That means your decimal numbers should have one decimal right above the other one, always in addition and subtraction. Remember that if you're given a whole number and you can't find a decimal, there's always an invisible decimal after every whole number, right after that one's place. If a number has less digits, add a zero to fill in the empty spot at the end of a number. And always check your work using the opposite operation. We're going to be using subtraction today to check our work. Let's do some practice. We're first going to do an example, so check this out. We're going to work a, a, a practice problem first, so we're going to add the numbers 644 and 492 thousandths, and the number 3 and 81 hundredths. If it bothers you that there is uh, less digits on the add end on the bottom, we can always put a zero in there, just so that it, so that it looks a little bit more like the numbers you're used to adding on the whole number side. Um, we always start with the place value position furthest to the right and notice that my decimals are lined up perfectly one on top of the other. In addition and subtraction with decimals, that is the first thing that I do is write my numbers so that the decimals are lined up. Then if you'll notice, all of my other place value positions fall into order one on top of the other. So let's go ahead and start. 2 plus 0 is 2, 9 and 1 are 10, I'm going to put my 0 down and carry my 1. 4 plus 1 is 5, and 5 and 8 are 13. Carry my 1, even though there's a decimal there, I still carry my 1 straight across. 4 plus 1 is 5, and 3 are 8. 4 plus 0 is 4, and 6 plus 0 is 6. And then my decimal comes straight down, right? so that my, my, the decimal in my answer lines up perfectly with the decimal in the two add-ins. So our answer is 648 and 302 thousandths. Now, we don't want to just turn that in. What if we made a mistake in our addition, which happens even to the best of us? We're going to check it using subtraction, and I'm just going to subtract the lower add-end. So I'll rewrite 3 and 81 hundredths, and remember we added a zero to that just to make it easier to add and subtract. Now we're going to subtract. 2 minus 0 is 2. 0 minus 1, can't do that, so I will regroup. 10 minus 1 is 9. 2 minus 8, I can't do that. So 12 minus 8 is 4. My decimal comes straight down. 7 minus 3 is 4. 4 minus nothing is 4. 6 minus nothing is 6. Now remember, we draw an arrow up to the number on top 
And if this number on the bottom matches the number on the top, then we know that we added correctly. Remember though that this is your final answer. This is your final answer. We're going to draw an arrow to that so we know that's our final answer. This is your checking answer. So our final answer is 648 and 302 thousandths. Okay, we're going to work some practice problems. If you need to watch that example that we just did again, go ahead and rewind it and watch it again. Um, you can always rewind or pause anytime you need to in these lessons. Here is our first practice problem. Number one, find the sum of 31 and 44 hundredths and 24 and 813 thousandths. Make sure in your journal when you're working this problem out that you line your decimals up and that you check it using the opposite operation. Did you write 56 and 253 thousandths? Let's see how we did that one. Okay, so I went ahead and wrote this number down for us. And when I wrote it down, there are less digits in the top number. So if I want to make that a little less confusing for myself, I can always add a zero right there. There's a zero there where I add whether I add one or not, but I, I like to look at it with all of with the same amount of digits. So zero plus three is three. Four and one are five. Four and eight are twelve. Put my two down. This is that time I'm carrying right across the decimal, pretending the decimal's not there almost. One plus one is two, plus four is six, and three plus two is five. And I'm going to carry my decimal straight down. My decimal, if I had a ruler, I could just almost set it right alongside those three decimals. Now, that's my final answer. I'll go ahead and draw my arrow now so I don't forget. That's the answer that I would enter in my clicker or that I would write on my paper. But now I'm going to subtract the add end on the bottom 24 and 813 thousandths. 3 minus 3 is 0, 5 minus 1 is 4, 2 minus 8 can't do that, we're going to regroup, so my 6 becomes a 5, 12 minus 8 is 4, 5 minus 4 is 1, and 5 minus 2 is 3, and then we'll add our decimal. Does it look exactly the same? It does, so we got our answer correct. Remember, this is our checking answer. Put your symbols there. And this is our final answer. Now we'll try some more. Number two, we're going to find the sum of 714 and 3 and 75 hundredths. Go ahead and work it in your journal. If you need a little hint, remember that every whole number has an invisible decimal at the end of the number. Did you write 717 and 75 hundredths? Let's check out how we did that. Okay, here's how we lined those numbers up. Remember that even though 714 is a whole number, it still has an invisible decimal right at the end of it on the right side, right after the number in the ones place. I can go ahead and draw that in to help me line my numbers up and then just add in zeros for those digits that aren't there to fill in those empty spots. We're using our zeros as placeholders here. So now we can add them. 0 and 5 are 5. 0 and 7 are 7. Bring our decimals straight down. You can do this right when you go through the problem or you can do it at the end. 4 and 3 are 7. 1 plus nothing is 1. And 7 plus nothing is 7. That's our final answer. But we want to check it to make sure we got it correct. So I'm going to rewrite my bottom add end right there underneath my sum and subtract it. 5 minus 5 is 0. 7 minus 7 is 0. Bring my decimal straight down. 7 minus 3 is 4. 1 minus 0 is 1. And 7 minus 0 is 7. 
So if this number matches this number, and you should be drawing your arrow up there, then I did my adding correctly. But this is my checking answer. Don't write that down as your answer. Write this number down as your answer. Problem number three. Find the sum of 8,302 and 1 tenths and 234 and 28 hundredths. Go ahead and work that problem in your journal and then start it again when you're ready to check your answer. Did you write 8,536 and 38 hundredths? Let's see how we did that one. Again, I have an uneven amount of digits. So to make this easier, I'm going to fill in that blank space, that empty ones place, or excuse me, oh, I know I'm gonna have to do push-ups for that one, that empty hundredths place with a zero. So now I can add them. Zero plus eight is eight. One plus two is three. Bring down my decimal. Two plus four is six. Zero plus three is three. Three plus two is five. And eight plus zero is eight. So that's my final answer. Now, remember, I'm going to take that lower add end and write it below using my opposite operation to check it. 8 minus 8 is 0, 3 minus 2 is 1, 6 minus 4 is 2, 3 minus 3 is 0, 5 minus 2 is 3, and 8 minus nothing is 8. Matches my top answer perfectly, my top add end, so I know that my final answer is correct. Woohoo! Now, I really want you to check your work. It is such a good feeling to know before you ever turn a test in that your answer is correct. And checking gives you the ability to do that. It's the difference between being the student who turns in accurate work and the student who sometimes makes careless mistakes. It happens to all of us. Smart kids check their work and catch mistakes. Challenge yourself, here it is. This problem is crazy challenging. You're gonna have so much fun with this. Now it's not that what I'm asking you to do is so hard, it's just that it's gonna take you some time. Remember when we talked about Albert Einstein's quote? It's not that I'm so smart, it's that I just stay with problems longer. This one you're gonna have to stay with a little bit longer. It's gonna take some work, some extra work. So um, come back, do your work in your journal, then come back and check your answer with the flip card answer and have some fun with this one. I'm really excited to see how many of you get this correct. Finishing up. Don't forget to review your learning goals. Do you understand everything I'm asking you to understand before you come to class? Remember, it's okay if you don't, but you need to make a note of that in your journal. Go ahead and give yourself a one if there are still a lot of things you need help with and help understanding. Give yourself a two if you got some of the problems correct, but maybe there's a little bit you don't understand or a few small mistakes that you're still making. Give yourself a three if you really get it. You know how to line up your decimals. You know how to fill in those empty place value positions with zeros. You know how to check your work using the opposite operations. This is exciting. Adding and subtracting decimals can be challenging, and a lot of fifth graders are really scared of it. But if you keep trying and keep giving your best effort, you're gonna be a master at it. Don't forget to write down any questions you still have. You've completed lesson 2-6, adding decimal numbers. Have a lot of fun this week. See you tomorrow.